Hey guys, it's been a while. I'm back. I just got back from a getaway and a lot of people thought I was dead. I'm not dead, still alive. Um, I know I haven't posted in a while. It's just because nothing has been going on. Every single day you just hear all this doom and gloom about Apple. So I got a little tired of that, thought I needed a little reset and I'm back for 2019 now. And what an update I have for you today. It seems like every time I decide to leave on a little vacation, the biggest leaks tend to happen. And yes, I know the iPhone 11 has leaked, the iPhone 10 R two, we are covering it and I will be posting a video, a descriptive video about that tomorrow. Stay tuned. We're working hard on that. In the meantime, there's a very big update I wanted to cover with you today. First things first is air power. Apparently it's entered production already. Everyone seemed to think that Apple killed this completely. They've had issues after issues, overheating, and now we're hearing from a source. It's a Hong Kong website, Charger Lab, and they're talking to a credible source they're saying who says that air power is coming very soon and it has officially entered production. In an update, they added to it that January 21st is when this thing is going to be entering mass production and they give a little details about the internals. So before we kind of knew that there would be a bunch of coils overlapping so you can place your device anywhere on the air power mats and it would start charging. There's no specified place for an iPhone or an Apple watch. So that's what makes this design so complicated is inside there's all these coils and they give the details of the coil setup. It supposedly has three layers of coils, top layer having seven, middle seven, and then bottom layer having seven. That way you can accurately place your device anywhere. So I really hope this is true because we haven't heard anything about it and I need this thing in my life. And the iPad mini 5, supposedly it's leaked. I reported on this before I left and this is the actual shell, supposedly. So it's coming from a user on Twitter. We don't know what association he has to Apple, whether he's an employee or if this is just some prototype he picked up somewhere, but it's definitely new. It's an iPad mini 4 with a modified shell design. The LTE band up top is very reminiscent of the newer iPads, not the absolute new ones, but the last generation of the Pros. It's very similar. Other than that, there's really no change that's discernible. He actually did share some pictures of the logic board as well. And on that logic board, there are a few key differences from before. Now, personally, what I think this is, is it was kind of a stopgap model. Apple started working on this, then they released the new iPads and it just doesn't fit into the lineup anymore because earlier before Christmas, yes, I've been gone for quite some time. Uh, this case right here shows some very big differences, a lot more than this housing leak is showing us. So vertical camera setup with a flash underneath, more speakers up top. So the iPad mini five is certainly making some waves. There've been a lot of leaks and rumors lately. Apple is certainly working on this device, but I highly doubt that this is it. Like I said, probably a stopgap device, a prototype as it is. And the Apple doom and gloom continues, but there is a light at the end of this dark and long tunnel for Apple right now. Apparently they cut production or are supposed to cut production for the new iPhones even more, another 10% Nikkei is reporting due to slow and sluggish demand in China. This is on top of Apple already slashing it two or supposedly three times already. Apple's stock is reflecting these changes and even worse is that a lot of retailers in China are now selling the iPhone 10 are for 20% less than Apple's official price. It's unknown where the savings are coming from here if Apple sells them to these retailers at a discount, but Apple itself has not changed the price in China of the iPhone XR. Still kind of cool that you can get a brand new one for a little less. It's still more than it is in America, $787 roughly now in China, but it was a little bit more, about 20% higher before. And a very interesting usage statistic from Max Panel. They're saying that the iPhone XR has overtaken usage of the iPhone XS and the iPhone iPhone XS had a month lead in sales on the iPhone XR. So according to this graph, the iPhone XS has a 2.89% usage share, the iPhone XR has a 3.02%, and the iPhone XS Max is the most at 3.65. So it looks like the iPhone XS Max is the most popular device of the bunch, the iPhone XR in close second, and the smallest iPhone of the 2018 lineup right now is the least popular. So it looks like large iPhones are here to stay. So a few days ago, Tim Cook had an interview with Jim Cramer from CNBC's Mad Money, and there were some very interesting interesting details in this interview he released about the inside workings of Apple right now. Apparently the wearables market for Apple, which I would assume includes AirPods and the Apple Watch, has exceeded peak iPod sales by 50%. The iPod was extremely popular back in the day, but these guys are even more so nowadays. That's amazing. You know, Apple is completely shifting as a company. It's changing so much. And sometimes you remember the past about how good the iPod days were, but you really don't think about how much better it could be in the future and how much it's changing for Apple. So I'm very happy 
to hear that's that wearables are doing very good. I'm personally satisfied with my Apple Watch and I'm very excited to see the future of this device. And a very interesting detail he added in that interview, which I cannot help but agree with, is that Apple's greatest contribution to mankind will be health related. They're already doing it with the Apple Watch, with all the new sensors they're adding. It's really helping people change their lives, shape their bodies even, save lives with the new EKG feature and the irregular heartbeat feature. And that's only gonna be getting better in the future. The AirPods 2 are gonna have even more biometric sensors, possibly heart rate sensors in there. So Apple is committing to something very, very important and it will only help drive sales in the future. They've also got a ton of patents regarding health that I've been covering in the last few news updates. Just Apple is incredibly focused on health and that is such a great thing. And a quick opinion of mine, 2019, it's gonna be an insane year for Apple. 2018 was okay. I thought it'd be better, honestly. It wasn't that great. iOS 12 was a disappointment, but 2019 is gearing up to be one of the best years for Apple ever. With AirPods 2, we're gonna be getting the new Apple Watch, the new iPhones with the, I'm not even gonna talk about them at all yet. I wanna save that for tomorrow's video, but iOS 13 also. Apple just needs to make a huge comeback. They need to start delivering, giving people what they want, especially in the software. And I think that this is the year that Apple will finally realize oh snap, we're not doing so well. We need to go balls out and just give them everything that they want. And it's truly gonna be a great year. So I'm excited for that and uh, covering all the leaks of all those new products with you. So moving on, there's a new collaboration between OtterBox and Corning Gorilla Glass. They're gonna start making screen protectors. I've actually thought of this in the past. Why the heck does Corning Gorilla Glass not offer screen protectors to sell as accessories? I mean, it's such a legendary technology. Apparently it's the best there is. And now they're finally gonna be bringing their screen protectors to market. They haven't given any details about strength or price or anything like that, just that they are committed to it and it will be coming out in the future. I actually go through a screen protector, I'd say about once a week. I bought a stack of 100 for bulk. They were like 30 cents each and I switch them out just every week. I like to have a fresh uncracked one and they seem to crack out of nowhere. So I think that the company that makes the world's best glass will also make the world's best screen protectors. And the Samsung Galaxy S10, the event date has been announced as February 20th, 2019. Extremely excited. It was an uncracked conventional announcements, cryptic video in there, but it doesn't matter. I'm so excited for this device. The one that'll show Apple how it's done. And I think it'll be one of the best galaxies in many years. A couple tidbits for you. CES this year was pretty great. I don't know why it didn't go. Honestly, kind of regret that. A couple notable things is a ton of accessories. There's a ton of new cases for iPhones coming out and I'm going to be covering those uh, with you. The first third party USB-C lightning connectors are now hitting the market. So you'll be able to get those for cheaper than they are from Apple. I think they're $19 not so bad, but there will be even more durable ones from third party makers. iOS hasn't changed at all. There's been one update, 12.1.3 beta 4, so didn't really miss out on anything there. A bit disappointed with how slow Apple's been with the releases. 12.2 should be out already. We should be getting some new features, but no word of that yet. I'll keep you updated on that. And iOS 13 is being worked on. For anyone that had any doubts that it would end with iOS 12, no. iOS 13 is coming and is being tested more and more on devices visiting websites as is shown here. These are the usage statistics. So that's gonna be coming out in June as usual, well, around there, but most likely June. And while on the topic of iOS 13, here's an opinion shared by 9to5Mac that I totally agree with and think that Apple should implement this very subtly into iOS 13. Skeuomorphism. Yes, modern skeuomorphism could make a comeback and I think should make a comeback with iOS 13. And here's a perfect example of it. So this is Bob Burrow. He shared a couple videos on YouTube of an interface that he designed that Apple should take example from for iOS 13. This guy's actually a former Apple software engineer. So that makes this even more cool. Basically, when you would shift your phone, the light surrounding you, it would affect the surfaces and the interface on iOS 13. As you can see, the glint of light changes as you position your phone differently. And this did exist in iOS 6 before on the button. When you would shift the iPhone, the reflection on the volume knob would change, but it wasn't truly using your environment to change it. It was just using an accelerometer. Using the environment would actually be a really cool way to advance the operating system. And Apple could kind of add this in many different areas of iOS. Add a little shadow, a little depth here. I think it would be really, really cool. Something new and fresh for a change. And I've seen a lot of people that don't like it 
experience, honestly, is definitely a preference, but I would like that in iOS. And the iPad Bendgate. So what's been happening with that? Apple is not fixing iPads. They're not replacing them. Instead, what they did is they launched a support page talking people through what's going on and the process Apple takes to build the iPad, how it's acceptable within reason. If it's more bent out of the box and you can return it within 14 days, but basically there is no issue. Bendgate for the iPad does not exist despite all the users that are getting bent iPads out of the box or even bending them with a slight bend when leaning back on a backpack or something. So I just thought that was interesting. Hopefully Apple will address this further in the future and actually fix or replace bent iPads. So there it is guys, the happenings of the last week or so with Apple, lots of exciting stuff. Tomorrow's video is going to be great. So stay tuned for that one. Peace.